So today we're going to do a 150 hour grease lubrication check on our eight yard here. You know, the reason we're doing this 150 hour is because they've extended it, um, the service on these trucks to 300 hours. So they're finding out there's some components that are failing and they're, they've decided that they're just trying to extend the life of those components. They have 10 different sections of grease circs that we'll go over. Um, you have steering linkage tie rod ends, your front suspension king pins, uh, your front wheel bearing oil level, uh, clutch linkage if you have that, front spring shackles, um, you have your U-joints for your PTO hydraulic pump, your slip yoke splines, uh, box pins, lift pins and tailgate linkage, and then your rear spring shackles, and then uh, the slack adjusters. Each truck is going to be different. Uh, the newer ones are doing a lot more synthetic bushings, and so you're not going to find them grease circs there. And then these newer trucks also have the hydraulic pump. They're putting them behind the cab instead of in front of the motor. The first thing that you, you probably should do is you should chalk your wheels. If you're going to lift up the box, make sure that the safety bar is put down and in, in, in place. And then you should probably pull the keys and just put them in your pocket. So one of the things we want to do is we want to check the wheel hub oil level. And there's a couple marks on there and you should be able to tell. And they're basically all standard. Um, it's usually just has a, a maximum full level and it's just a real thin ring around there that you should be able to see. And then if it is low, um, we need to put 80, 90 weight into it. On certain trucks, on the steering column or steering rod, you might have a grease circ on this small U-joint right up on top and bottom. And if you have any clutch assembly that you could get to in this area, it would be a good time to do that. Before you get started greasing your truck or checking it out, you know, safety's Probably the number one thing, so safety glass is always a good idea. So inside this wheel compartment here, we're going to be greasing the steering linkage, which will have your pitman arm, your drop-down arm, and your tie rod ends. And then you'll have your slack adjuster and your S-cam grease zerks, and your kingpin top and bottom. While you're under there, you might as well do your spring shackles front and rear. Generally, you'll put in enough grease to where your, these rubber boots will just start to swell and you might actually get a little grease out of them and then they're good. There's no sense of over greasing it but we definitely want to make sure we're doing it right. So. so in this particular truck the hydraulic pump is behind the cab and it's not in front. So uh, either if it's on the front or the back, it's still going to have some kind of a drive line and, and U-joints that you'll have to grease. Uh, you'll have a U-joint that's right next to the hydraulic pump. You'll have a slip yoke in there. And then you'll have another U-joint right up against the back of the motor. Um, we do have an access door in this truck inside the cab to get to that front U-joint. So on this U-joint, Typically, when you grease, you want to have grease to come out all four points on this U-joint. And then on the slip yoke, typically on this size, you'll put about two to three pumps of grease on, on this one. On a bigger drive line, you might put four to five. So the uh, Next part of grease in this truck would be from the back of the transmission uh, to each axle on the, U, on the drive lines. And we'll have a U-joint at each end of the, each drive line and there should be a slip yoke in there too. So now that we have the hydraulic pump done, uh, we'll start greasing the back part of the truck. Um, if you're going to raise the box, just make sure your lock bar is in place safety bar is in place. So on each end of the drive line, there should be a U-joint that we'll grease. 
and there should be a slip yoke in there as well. So on some of these U-joints you can grease, you might be able to get to them from the top and some of these you'll have to probably get from the bottom. So after getting done with the drive line, uh, the next thing you'd probably grease would be on your brakes. So you're going to have an S cam on each wheel that you'll have to do. You'll have your slack adjusters on each wheel. And then you could possibly have grease cirques on your shackles, spring shackles. Uh, this truck doesn't have it, but some of our older trucks do. Your box pins. So this truck ha doesn't have grease cirques on these box pins. It actually has a neoprene bushing on each side. Um, so some of these newer trucks, you might not find a grease cirque. And then you could have grease cirques on your tailgate mechanism. It'd be back up in here. There's a rod that goes all the way across to the other side. And that might be a place where you could have grease cirques. This is a newer truck and uh, they did not put it on this one. And then on this truck, the hydraulic ram to lift the box is on the very front. So you'll have grease cirques at this bottom pin on both sides. And then the collar that goes around this hydraulic ram actually has two grease cirques on it as well. So with doing this 150 hour service on this truck, you know, the main thing that we're looking at is, you know, we're trying to extend the life of the components of this truck. Uh, if the truck is running good and, and, you're, and we're taking good care of them, keeping them clean, you know, checking them to make sure nothing's broken or worn out. We're gonna get a lot more miles and hours out of these tracks. The other thing is, uh, I think that when you actually do part of the service on these trucks, uh, you're gonna notice particular things that might be worn or broken or might need fixed. And I think you're gonna take a little bit more pride in how, you, how we keep these trucks and keep them running.